a KQED HD production. In the mid-1980s, Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant's two reactors near San Luis Obispo were the last to go into operation in California. Today, they produce 16% of Northern California's electricity, enough to power about 2 million homes. Despite the 2011 accident at the nuclear plant in Fukushima, Japan, here in the United States, some policymakers are working to expand nuclear energy as a source of abundant, carbon-free electricity. To meet our growing energy needs and prevent the worst consequences of climate change, we'll need to increase our supply of nuclear power. It's that simple. Work has started on four new multi-billion dollar reactors in Georgia and South Carolina, the first to begin construction in the U.S. in more than 30 years. But observers disagree over exactly what this means. Is a rebirth of nuclear energy underway in the United States? Today we don't know if there is a nuclear renaissance. That will depend on whether these new plants that are under construction now can be built on schedule, on budget, at a reasonable cost. The notion that nuclear is the only option we have to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions is preposterous based on the actual investment record of the U.S. utility industry. There are a host of options there. Various highly efficient natural gas technologies, energy efficiency, and renewable energy in all of its forms. Overall, nuclear energy provides 20 percent of U.S. electricity far more than all solar, wind, and other renewable sources combined. And a recent EPA study shows that in order for the country to reduce its carbon emissions enough to slow down climate change, it will need to boost its nuclear energy production. But in California, prospects for the development of new plants stalled long ago. Rancho Seco has one of the worst operating records in the nation. The Rancho Seco nuclear plant in Sacramento was closed in 1989 after a public vote. And California still has in place a 1976 moratorium on building any new nuclear plants until the federal government creates a permanent site to dispose of nuclear waste. Still, scientists around the country are moving forward with new nuclear reactor designs. We want to be thinking about how to develop new reactor technologies that are substantively safer and more sustainable and therefore could be used in the longer term to continue to provide low carbon electricity. Today we're going to the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. Together with the San Onofre plant near San Diego, Diablo Canyon is one of California's two nuclear plants. Down below us are the two reactor containment buildings that contain the nuclear reactors that are producing heat and boiling water. The steam is going into that large turbine building behind and turning the turbines that turn generators and make the electricity that is going out over our heads into the center of California. In addition to heading the Nuclear Engineering Department at the University of California, Berkeley, Per Peterson is also a member of the Independent Safety Committee that monitors Pacific Gas and Electric's Diablo Canyon nuclear plant. If you think of the plant as being a kettle, the steam from it is coming over here and goes into the turbine where it expands, spinning the turbines and producing the electricity. Whether it's fueled by coal, natural gas, or nuclear reaction, the goal at any power plant is to produce heat and turn water into steam. Each of Diablo Canyon's two nuclear reactors contains rods filled with uranium. Every year and a half, workers bring in fresh uranium to replace the fuel that has been used up by the nuclear reaction. The amount of energy that comes from that reaction is a million times larger than what comes from chemical reactions, which is why so little fuel is needed to fuel nuclear reactors. 
In a nuclear reaction, a particle called a neutron hits the nucleus of a uranium atom. The reaction, known as fission, breaks the nucleus in two and releases heat, as well as more neutrons that go on to create a chain reaction of nucleus splitting. Nuclear reactions are an efficient way to produce heat. But nuclear plants present special challenges because of the possibility of radioactive materials being released into the environment. A reactor cooling system at Pennsylvania's Three Mile Island nuclear plant failed in 1979, causing a near meltdown and the release of a small amount of radioactive steam. The accident at Three Mile Island destroyed the plant. And most utilities would prefer not to have resources where human error can have that kind of a devastating consequence. And I think for the industry as a whole, that's the real lesson of Three Mile Island. But over the last 30 years, what the nuclear industry has proven is that we can be reliable and we can be safe and that we put safety first. At Diablo, there are probably about 15,000 issues that are raised each year. And that's good. What we want is we want people to identify issues at a low level and then to fix those issues. On any given day of the week, over 90% of plants are operating in the United States. This is much better than 25 years ago when over a third on any average day were not running. Even so, nuclear accidents from the past continue to cast a shadow on the technology. The worst one to date happened with a devastating explosion and fire at the Chernobyl plant in Ukraine in 1986, which released radiation across Europe. 28 workers died from radiation exposure. Other health effects started to show up a few years later. The primary finding so far is the increased risk of thyroid cancer and other thyroid diseases in those who were children and adolescents at the time of the accident, and also increased risk of leukemia, but only among those who participated in the cleanup work and received uh, substantial doses of radiation. When I went to medical school in Belarus, I saw the first patients coming into the wards with thyroid cancer. These were very young children, um, under age five, Researchers predict that the Chernobyl accident will cause thousands of cases of thyroid cancer and leukemia. 14 deaths from thyroid cancer have been documented so far, and scientists are still following the population for other health effects that might appear later. But experts say the thyroid cancers could have been prevented by giving the population potassium iodide right after the radiation leak. That was done in Japan after the Fukushima accident. So something that has been learned from Chernobyl has been implemented in um, Fukushima and really probably draw down the risk. There is no question that the health effects from burning fossil fuels are huge. The American Lung Association estimates 13,000 people die in the U.S. each year from breathing soot particles from coal-fired power plants. The public health and environmental consequences of using fossil fuels are so enormous that they dwarf even the consequences of nuclear accidents. But that said, we need to be moving towards new nuclear energy technologies that do not have the potential to release radioactive materials into the environment. Run through the reactor another time until it's fully depleted. Today, Peterson's team at UC Berkeley is modeling a new type of reactor they say would be safer than existing ones, which are cooled by water. The need for a safer reactor became all the more pressing as images like these showed a nuclear accident unfolding in real time. Several explosions took place in Fukushima when the plant lost power following an earthquake and tsunami. At Fukushima, water reacted with the metal cladding of the fuel to release hydrogen, which ultimately caused explosions. Peterson's reactor would eliminate water as the coolant. This would also prevent another problem that occurred at Fukushima. The water pressure built up inside the containment to very high pressures, causing leakage 
and requiring venting, which released radioactive materials. In today's experiment, plastic balls stand in for graphite pebbles that store the fuel. These pebbles wouldn't melt down in an accident. Water stands in for a new type of coolant. The fluoride salts that we're developing as coolants boil at extremely high temperatures, above 1400 degrees centigrade, which means that under the conditions we operate at, they're always at low pressure. It takes about 30 days for a pebble to go through the core before it's removed, inspected, and possibly reinserted. That means that one is continuously replacing the fuel, and you don't need to shut down for refueling outages like at Diablo Canyon happens every 18 months. Peterson's pebble bed reactor could be in operation in 20 years. In California, new reactor technology is unlikely to make a difference in the short term. But if nuclear energy is going to be a significant part of the equation for a clean energy future, the work has to start now. I think it's critical for us to be looking for all possible ways to reduce the impact of using energy. And improving nuclear energy technology is one of the routes we need to work on.